The moon fascinates mankind for thousands of years. And people started early on to spend time under the night sky observing the moon and its rotation around planet Earth. The moon also is subject to uncountable horror movies, mystical fairy tales, stories carried from generation to generation. And with today's gear like modern telescopes, but also with bridge cameras like the Nikon P1000, we can actually get fairly close to the moon. Over the years, technology developed and smartphones became better and better. And smartphones also became capable of so-called super zooms or as Samsung calls it, space zoom. And besides my professional photography, I started last year to also look into smartphone capabilities to zoom the moon. And here is my first, let's say, experiment with the Huawei P30 Pro, which I think was remarkable at this point in time in terms of results. But still, when I compared in a later video the moon zoom from the Huawei P30 Pro with a professional shot from a professional DSLM, there is still a huge gap. So my hopes were high when the Samsung S20 Ultra hit the market based on its advertised space zoom, but in the video I did later on to review that, unfortunately Samsung is smoothing out the JPEG so much that the moon is hardly recognizable. But now Huawei introduced the P40 Pro Plus with a 10 times optical zoom and a 100 times super zoom array. And of course, I need to test this with respect to the moon. And that's what this video is all about. So let's get started with the video. So let's start with settings and on the P40 Pro Plus, let's go into the settings. Let's scroll down to the timer and let's set the timer to two seconds for a sturdy shot situation. The night mode is the first we want to try. And you see I am here in the night mode. I zoomed up to more than 50 times magnification. And uh, what the night mode does is you can also tweak this with shutter speed and ISO but the night mode will try to compensate for the black surroundings of the moon, which will not create the best possible shot here. Photo mode will be next and photo mode is basically equipped with almost everything you need. I switched on AI here and the AI recognizes the moon. So there is the German word for moon, say Mond on the right hand side. And the camera is pretty much in automatic mode when you are in the normal photo mode. It's doing a fantastic job in recognizing and detecting everything that's necessary for a good image. And that image actually will be very usable. But let's go up to a higher magnification here, more than 70 times. And still then, I think the camera and the AI detects the moon very well. And we can also take here a good shot. The P40 Pro Plus can go up to 100 times magnification. So let's try this out and let's see what the camera is seeing. And still you see the structure of the moon quite nicely recognizable. And also here we can take another shot, of course. The most promising mode for moon photography is the Pro Mode. And in the Pro Mode, I can set all shooting parameters manually. And the way I did it is I put my shutter speed to 1 over 125 seconds, ISO to 50, central metering could also be spot and of course you cannot use the raw mode and you can also not use the high resolution 50 megapixel mode even if the smartphone is on a tripod 100 times magnification really is a challenge in terms of image composition this continued for a while and i experimented with the different modes in the huawei p40 pro plus and i'm going to share now my best results also show what i did in post to make the moon a bit more pop and in general, it's a good result if you bear in mind that this is coming from a smartphone. So the best result I achieved as indicated already in the pro mode, and that's the image as it came out of the smartphone. No manipulation, no tweaking at all. So let's put the other examples we saw in the intro of this video here next to the P40 Pro Plus shot. And clearly you see some evolution here. So the Samsung, as mentioned in other videos, unfortunately smooths out the JPEGs, although the hardware would be very well capable to do a much better shot. The P30 Pro still a little more soft and in particular here on that part of the moon and the P40 Pro Plus 
clearly is the best result. Post-processing, of course, improves the situation. And here you have a glimpse into Lightroom. I used some of the settings and on the left hand side you see the image as it came out of camera. On the right hand side you see the image after post-processing. And clearly here you can get even more structure on the moon. But that's only possible of course if that information about the structure is in the JPEG. What really astonished me was that the 100 times zoom still produces some meaningful picture and is not smoothing out the structures as we saw it on other smartphones like the Samsung. And if we do a little bit of post-processing and compare before and after, we can even get a little more out of the JPEG as it came out of the camera by post-processing. Let's wrap up the video with a few conclusions. First of all, the Huawei P40 Pro Plus with its 10 times optical and 20 times hybrid zoom currently in the market is the best telecamera setup we have on a smartphone. Clearly there is also evolution going on from the manufacturer side and what was best last year, the P30 Pro, is no longer best. The P40 Pro Plus actually is the new champion. And third, hardware is not everything. The software also needs to be developed in a way that it is not smoothing out images as we saw it on the Samsung, but preserves some clarity for further post-processing. If you liked that video, please drop me your thumbs up. If you like my channel, do not forget to subscribe to stay tuned on my content. Thanks for watching and peace out.